सो हेलो एंड वेलकम यू ऑल टू सेल टू एम डी एस डेंटल अकेडमी आई होप यू ऑल आर फाइन एंड डूइंग वेल फॉर योर एम डी एस प्रिपरेशन एंड योर अदर एसोसिएटेड गोल्स सो टूडे वी आर डीलिंग विद द सेवनटीन लेक्चर ऑफ आवर अकेडमी एंड द थर्ड लेक्चर इन द एंडोनटिक इमरजेंसी सो द टूडे लेक्चर विल बी ऑन एंडोनटिक इमरजेंसीज आफ्टर द ट्रीटमेंट ओके सो फ्रेंड प्लीज वॉच टिल दैंड If you have not subscribed the channel, please subscribe it and also like and share the videos with your friends. So today I want to deal certain questions asked by the MDS aspirants via mail. So last week near about 10 to 15 mails have come. So I will uh, point out important points from those mail. So some students have asked me, I'm sorry, many students have asked me that sir, what is the ideal time preparation for the MDS? As we are in the mid of the year. so friends uh, first of all i will request you that you can watch my first video on the mds preparation i will upload at all the common question so today i will deal in little bit detail with this question that dear friends there are no ideal time for the mds preparation it is the time when you are feeling that you want to do mds in good college your inner thoughts are telling you so that is the right time for preparation so i those who are watching me i am telling after watching the video you start your mds preparation and this is the right time for your preparation you should not wait till the end of your internship give one year no today and right now you start your mds preparation second they have asked me sir why you are not mentioning the important textbook points or uh, your important textbook names and other things so friends whichever video i am uploading on youtube those video i made from the standard reference book only so many book i have collaborate and i have made and regarding which book you have to read that depends upon your status now some people have completed the pulse and gauri shankar they are asking me for them the preparation path will be different those who are starting freshly for them preparation path is different so whatever doubts are there you can mail me the mail id is given in the description box and also the detail has been given and again i am requesting you that you watch my first video on the mds preparation a type of orientation lecture the link is given right above you can click on that so let's get started the today's topic that is endodontic emergencies after the treatment so friends now we study about endodontic emergencies after the treatment if you want to watch the endodontic emergency before and during the treatment you can click on the i button given above so most oftenly after the treatment we can see the post obturation pain and vertical root fracture so now post obturation pain so generally after the root canal therapy patient usually complains of a pain or a discomfort especially while biting or chewing most often we encounter such post obturation pain after treating posterior teeth rather than anterior teeth so generally such uh, discomfort usually subsides in a period of 2 to 5 days but if at all it prolongs beyond that period then operator has to reassess the treatment he or she has done so what are the cause for the post obturation pain the common causes are the over extension of your gutta percha or seal under extension hyperocclusion missed canals poor coronal seal this is one of the most important cause for the root canal failure or the persistent apical inflammation so under filling so why the under filling occur maybe a natural barrier in the canal or error atrogenic error there is formation of ledge insufficient flaring of your root canal poorly adapted master cone or inadequate condensation pressure this all causes under filling of root canal so if if it occurs then you have to go for the removal of the uh, gp and uh, sealers and go for the retreatment then the overfilling the overfilling can either be of a gutta percha or a sealer the etiology for the overfilling is a sequelae of your over instrumentation uncontrolled condensation pressure maybe because of your inflammatory resorption or in some special cases like a open apex or incomplete development of root you can see overfilling so most often some dentists like to form that apical puff but please don't form okay it can cause irritation in your periapical area internal inflammation can occur and the patient may have pain so what you do if there is a overfilling 
If sealer extrusion is there, no treatment may require as it can be removed in most of the cases by the body by the action of macrophages. But if it is gutta percha, then you have to go for the reroute canal therapy or apixectomy followed by a retrograde filling. So now vertical root fracture. It is a longitudinal fracture that originates in the root apically and it propagates coronally. You have to differentiate between the vertical root fracture and cracked tooth syndrome. To watch it, you can click on the i button. I have explained in the endodontic emergency part one. Most often, this vertical root fracture is commonly seen in maxilla and mandible, and roots that are wider buccolingually but thinner mesodistally tend to fracture more. It is commonly seen in endodontically treated tooth. Around 11 to 20 percent of endo treated tooth may result in vertical root fracture. It is seen most commonly in male and uh, about 45 years. Then what are the predisposing factors for your vertical root fracture? Traumatic occlusion, excessive load on root canal tooth, bruxism, uh, variation in root anatomy, the less amount of dentin left or a loss of moisture in dentin or a presence of pre-existing cracks. So these all factors can predispose your tooth to a VRF, that is a vertical root fracture. Then what are the clinical features most often we see? So in early manifestation we can see as the cracks get propagate outward, the patient have a dull pain while chewing or biting. Okay, And we can see sometimes the swelling like abscess like swelling on the associated with uh, with respect to the associated tooth. So as the lesion will progress, we can see the sinus tract near the cervical area. Okay, the sinus tract in case of non vital tooth is seen more apically. Okay, uh, the presence of the multiple sinus tract or a sinus tract both on the buccally and the lingually is a pathognomonic for a vertical root fracture. The other thing we can see is the presence of deep osseous defects. The presence of deep isolated pocket. Okay, if you found out the deep isolated pocket, it is a pathognomonic or it is a sign for your vertical root fracture. In case of periodontitis, the pocket formation is generalized, but in case of VRF, it is localized. So as the lesion will many uh, progress, you can see the loss of alveolar bone. Here you can see the J-shaped reducency, even you can find out the hello uh, reducency or in some cases a separated root can also be seen. So as the lesion will progress, the pocket which were tight and narrow, now it becomes a wider. So statement has been given by the American Association of Endodontists, it is very good for to know that PRF is occurred, that a sinus tract and a narrow isolated periodontal probing defect associated with a tooth that has undergone endodontic therapy with or without post pl uh, placement can be considered to be a pathognomonic for presence of VRF. Sometimes when we uh, go for the uh, cementation of post or uh, condensation, slight uh, sound can be heard, a crack like sound can be heard. That can also be the sign for your VRF. And you can see in this beautiful diagram that how the Pockets associated with VRF are different and with your periodontitis are different. So you can see here with the periodontitis the pockets are wider and here the pockets are deep and narrower. You can see here also in this cross section how the pockets are wider and how the pocket is narrower. So if you go for your periodontal probing in case of periodontitis in this way you can find out the probing but in case of VRF due to narrow uh, pockets the periodontal probe will not go and you require a specialized plastic probe for the diagnosis. And how you will treat this VRF? So as longitudinal fracture is that the prognosis is hopeless. So mostly if the tooth is a single rooted tooth, the extraction is a treatment of choice. But in case of multi rooted tooth, a hemisection or ready section can be done. So friends, that was all about the endodontic emergencies after the treatment. It is a vertical root fracture in the post-obturation.